If they had not done that, th their estimation was that by 2 o'clock that afternoon, five and a half trillion dollars would have been drawn out of the money market system of the United States, would have collapsed the entire economy of the United States, and within 24 hours the world economy would have collapsed. Now we talked at that time about what would happen if that happened. It would have been the end of our economic system and our political system as we know it. Okay, that's the most honest thing I've heard on television, because that goes back to this. They didn't see what we're going through now. Maybe they did. I don't think so. They didn't see it coming. They were trying to stop world war. So now we have to decide. Can we save things like the banks or Greece? I personally don't think we can. I don't think it's healthy to. Others do. But the question should be now, should we save them? Now, knowing what I just told you, that if we don't, everything collapses, I mean, it's designed to collapse. Should we save them? Your gut instinct is, yes, we should. Hello, we should. But now let me introduce you to somebody else from history. This guy is an economist you've probably never heard of because he's been practically erased from the history books. He was a Russian. His name was Nikolai Kondrakiev. He is credited with popularizing, and it's oh so very popular with the people I hang out, the wave theory on capitalism. 1925, he writes a book, Major Economic Cycles. Basically, the wave theory, hang on, I need my pipe. The wave theory was that capitalism had a, uh, for a consistent pattern of ups and downs and long waves average 40 to 60 years, but they, they always show a turnaround. Let me explain what this means. Here's a guy who is in Russia. He, Stalin comes to him and says, uh, So, uh, Kondrakiev, uh, what's better, communism or capitalism? You're Stalin. What do you think you're going to say? Kondrakiev says, Let me think about it. So he, he studies capitalism, communism, and he comes up with a wave theory. Okay? He says to Stalin, You know what? I've been thinking about it. And, and I think it's every 40 to 60 years you have this cycle. And let me explain it this way. Let's start here. This is winter. Economic winter. It's really what we're at the beginning of right now. This is when everything is just cold and nasty. Okay? There's nothing going on. And people start to lose hope. And they're like, oh, what is this? This is the Great Depression. Okay? Then there's springtime. This, I'd say this started in 19, probably 47 with us. Springtime. And it just starts coming up and everything is exciting. This is where the phrase, remember, if you've heard this, green shoots. Green shoots because it's spring here economically. Then you get into a season of summer where it doesn't seem like anything can go wrong. You are in summer. It's always going to be like this. We're always going to go to the beach. We're always going to go to the pool. It's so great. Nineteen seventies really to the nineteen nineties probably nineteen ninety. Here's here's summer when America can do no wrong. Then you hit fall. This is probably nineteen ninety, probably ninety five to now. The leaves start to turn. You start to see things like debt. You start to see things that aren't working. You start to say, wait a minute, this, isn't, this, is, this doesn't seem good. It doesn't seem like it's right. But you have such arrogance from summer that you just don't believe that the leaves will ever turn. So you just think it's always going to be this way. It's going to be okay. It's going to be okay. And right here at the end of autumn, you again hit winter. And it's only at the very end do people freak out and say, <gasps> and they try to save it. His theory was Stalin and communism would always come in at this point and push money up. And the state would prop everything, They'd do things like, oh, I don't know, buy General Motors. And they'd push it up. It doesn't matter. You cannot stop the trees from going into hibernation. And it's bad in the long run. 
because it's a cycle. It will come out of it again. It's important for things to burn down. It's important for the trees to go into hibernation. It's okay. 1938, Kondrakiev, I love this. He's thrown into prison. He's tried. On the same day he was sentenced to prison, they executed him. Stalin said, no, I don't like your wave theory. Now, we're no longer allowing these natural dips to happen. I'm telling you that the argument coming in the near future will be that capitalism isn't working. We need to try something else. The problem with the argument is we're not a capitalist country. We haven't been in quite some time. We continue to prop things up. We're not allowing the capitalist system to clear out. What is so free about a government that takes over car companies and banks and health care and they control prices, they cap salaries? That is not a free market. This must go in cycles. We've disturbed the natural order of things, so we're not free. And people are going to say, hmm, revolutionaries are going to say, we've got to try something different because this doesn't work. The paradigm is about to shift. Because we're all tied together, intentionally, for a completely innocent reason, the old think and the old fixes won't work anymore. Everyone sees, seems to know it except for us here in America. China gets it. Tomorrow night, Joshua Cooper Ramo is going to be on the program uh, doing a different show tomorrow, and you don't want to miss this one. He's over in Beijing, and we talk from time to time, and he lives over there, and he says, Glenn, it is exciting over there. They're all looking at what are the possibilities, what's going to happen. They're concerned about instability. They know what's coming, but they are thinking about how do we redesign. Here in America, we're not. A massive transformation is about to happen, and they're excited about it, and we're just hanging on by our fingernails. But not everybody in the administration or in government or in America is oblivious to this fact. The Obama administration knows it. Radical progressives know it. This is their window of opportunity and they are thrilled. The only way to survive this is to pick a radical. These guys were radicals as well. Free radicals. Think outside the box. May I be so bold to say cut spending in half radical idea. Reduce the size of government in half. Flat tax of 12 to 15 percent. And here's what happens. While the rest of the world and Europe is on fire and begin to crater, because remember, we're all tied together. Somebody like George Soros and all of the entrepreneurs of the world need some place to put their money. Entrepreneurs need to go to redesign. They're going to go to China if we don't wake up. We have always been the most stable free nation on earth. As the rest of the world craters, if we get government and taxes out of the way and we tell the world we're serious about not racking up debt, money will look for a place to go. If we have low taxes, minimum regulation, maximum freedom, money from all over the world will leave the burning economies of the world and rush to the safe havens of America over China. We can get the best minds and the best capital and the best workers in the world here. We will reinvent the world of tomorrow if we are stable with minimum government intrusion, economic incentives for people to come here. But right now, we're headed in the wrong way. We have to be the thinkers we once were, the innovators who perfected the assembly line, who thought out of the box, who discovered vaccines, the people who didn't throw their hands up in the air. Do you remember this as a kid? This is Apollo 13. Apollo 13, Houston, we have a problem. When we were kids and this took off, we didn't know that they may not make it back. They had to look inside their capsule and find things that were never designed to bring them back, use them in ways they weren't meant to be used, just to get home. They made the impossible possible. But this is who we are. But we have to choose to be those people again. We have to roll up our sleeves, think out of the box, and innovate our way out of this mess.